So this is the second of our Bouvernensis pines. I half completed one and we will revert to all of them because there were three Bouvernensis pines to begin with. So let's give you some ideas as to what we can do with this. I always like challenging trees and most of you who are amateurs who are following me on YouTube, we're not talking about refining all these majestic exhibition trees. It is a hobby which I'm going to show you what you can do to get enjoyment. And for people like me, even I find it challenging to find solutions to these trees. So although this is a dwarf Scott spine which is used for bonsai, it's much too tall to make a conventional tree. So the obvious solution for big trees is to make it a literati tree. Okay, this may be tall and it lends itself to literati. I know I can do a simple thing just bending this branch using this part, getting rid of this, getting rid of this, and that will be the end of solution. But this tree has some challenges because this part from here to here, very straight, not looking very nice. And then it's got this bit here, which was a branch I tried to wire years ago, maybe like 20 years ago, I tried to wire it. And the wire, I think I did take off, it's not embedded there. So it's made a nice feature there, but then the rest of it wasn't wired, so it continued to grow on into a long, tall branch. So I don't want to cut that off if I can help it. So I'm trying to incorporate this branch or trunk into the complete design. So let us see how I can go about that without having to discard it. It is so easy just to cut it off and call it the, a day. But let's see what we can get out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this. So what will I do? There are no two branches to wire. So I may have to just do it like a trunk, wiring a trunk. So I will insert the wire in the soil, go up the trunk. I'm going contra to the original wiring path so that I don't make too many marks. All these little snags before wiring is worth cleaning it up because they come in the way of the wires. So that makes the wiring a bit simpler. This, by the way, is four and a half millimeter wire. The Bouvernensis pine, unlike the ordinary Scots pine, the Bouvernensis, by the way, is the dwarf Scots pine, can be very brittle. So I have snapped these trees in the past, so I've got to be extra careful in case I snap this again. So I've got to just hold it, grip it with my palms virtually, so that should it crack, I can feel it and stop it at the right time. So this was a very straight branch. I'm introducing some line in it to give it a more interesting line. Anything dead straight for bonsai is not interesting. Usually when you have a twin trunk, the twins should match each other or mirror each other in image. So I'll leave that for the time being. None of this is rehearsed. So if it breaks, it is part of the fun if it cracks. 
Already I've introduced a curve, so I've got rid of that very straight problem with that small trunk. So it is encouraging, hopeful as we say, hopeful. I'm trying to mirror the feeling. Can you see this going this way? This will go this way as well. This is much too straight. Okay, I'll leave that for the time being. Now what can I do with this part? This is more promising than this. I don't want it to reach the sky. This is quite promising like that. So, let me try and split the trunk. Whenever I get a very stiff branch, I always think of splitting it to see what can happen from splitting it. Either make it more bendable or doing something even more adventurous. I think I will bring the tree down a bit. It's too tall. So all the time I'm working, I'm thinking in my mind, what can I do, what can I do? So the mind is working overtime, as it were. Absolutely working overtime to see what the possibilities are. Because I'm going to use that, I'm going to try and preserve that. If I'm going to split the tree, I will make sure this branch is part of that. I'm doing it partly as a challenge, but because there is no obvious solution for utilizing this tall tree and using this tall second branch, I'm going to see if I can do something radical. So I'm now going to use the root cutter. Root cutter is very similar to the branch splitter, except that the blade is wider. So I want to cut more in one go than a branch splitter would do. I am literally splitting the trunk into two.
I could use an axe, but axe would be too big. I could have brought my Chinese cleaver. I've done this before to other trees, so I know that I won't kill it. It's getting a bit top heavy. Can't support it. Okay, now let's return it back to the top turntable. Okay, I've now split that trunk. It's become more bendable. So, now that I've split it, I'm going to bend it. So you can see that the two parts are sliding over each other, so it makes it easier to bend. So it certainly become more bendable. I'll just take it down a little more. Pretty sure it's not going to break. And then before we put the wire on, we will wrap like a bandage over it. Bandage is the best word to use. So you may have seen some people use raffia, which is a natural like grass material. Or you can use, this is masking tape, you could use that. It's literally, as I say, a bandage, nothing more than that. Uh, so, and on one of the other videos that I showed you, that Italian master, he used the inner tube of his bicycle rubber tire to put over it, so you can use anything. There's no fixed thing you can use. Anything that you can improvise, you can even use ordinary box packing tape. So this is the packing tape we use for sending up parcels. It keeps the moisture in and it prevents the trunk from snapping altogether. It's only a temporary measure. And now we're going to try and bend that trunk a little bit because that trunk is far too stiff and rigid. We want to give some movement 
to the trunk. So we're going to talk of using quite thick wire. This I think is like six millimeter wire. So serious stuff. So starting from the bottom. It might even require two coils of wire, double coil. to see if it does bend. I've got some bend in it, so that's hopeful. We should have bent it when the tree was much younger. We've got a bend already. What was a straight trunk is no longer straight. Well, let's look at it again. See, what was absolutely straight, we've got now quite an interesting curve, so just shows it's possible to bend it. So I'm just, what we call, extemporizing. I'm creating as I go along. I'm just going to let the tree dictate to me what it wants to do. I bet you viewers must be waiting to hear it crack. Hasn't happened yet. That's cascading branches, rather interesting. So what was absolutely straight has become quite dramatic. I was looking at that side all the time as the front, 
but it may not be the best front. How interesting is that? Lots of bends and twists. Twists and bends. So this is just what we call extemporizing. I didn't plan it. I'm just doing what the tree allows me to do. So that dead straight tree is looking ever so promising. And if I say that I'm pleased, that's saying something. OK, we will just carry on and see what the tree leads me to do. I think just for the sake of an extra piece of wire, I'm going to put an extra piece of wire just to give me like a reinforcement so that I can bend it more. Or shall I? Let me just see. Probably I may not need it. So, no, I think I will. Why spoil it for the sake of a piece of wire? No, it's not thick enough. I said to you at the very start that repeating the pattern makes it interesting. Any twin situation that you have, just by repeating the pattern, gives it interest. So this went out like 90 degrees out on a limb virtually. Now I'm going to repeat this pattern again this way. So the two is like synchronizing. As an electrical engineer, if anyone is an electrical engineer that you know, there's a thing called a synchronous motor. So I'm synchronizing the two. It's the closest thing I've ever got to in my electrical engineering, using wire. <laughs> and because the tree is still tall, it will still be a literati a double literati. It's changed a bit quite a bit. Okay, so these I will sort out. There are a couple of pads here that we can create. I'm going to just do a rough structuring of the tree and then leave the refining to do on my own because I think the video will run too long. So I'm trying to create the repetition and then this has to be rationalized 
far too much going on there, far too dense. Make some pads here. Just shows how effective that little wire cut is. I cut a five mil piece of wire with that. Keep looking for the right grade of wire to use. Okay, I can do that. And wire this to this. Is thinking how can I link the two branches that always is at the back of my mind and it should always be in your thinking as well how can I link the two branches together so that I get an anchor I won't use the two branch term too much because situations can arise where you don't need two branches like this I stuck the wire in the soil that's just to provide the anchor. I didn't use two branches there, but generally two branch principle is used for anchoring the wire. So I've used this branch and this branch to wire the two. There are one or two viewers I notice who are extreme critics. They know who they are. And I'm not trying to show how clever I am. I'm sure I'm here to teach you certain principles. I'm not here in doing a beauty contest. I'm just here to teach you certain principles for you to enjoy and to be able to practice on your own. So these are going to be reduced, these pads will be reduced. These are all going to form pads, but I'm going to reduce it. But as I say, we may not have the luxury of spending hours and hours doing that. So you can see the form I've created already. The double, the double trunk has been kept, and I'm repeating the double to reflect that movement and this movement and I've got a little apex and I'm going to refine that pad and that's what I'm going to do. So here we are, this is another day and I worked about two hours yesterday and we bent that very straight trunk into uh, some curvy shape and I've managed to bend both of them. I didn't want to get rid of this one because this comes out at a very 
odd angle, almost 90 degrees. But because the literati would look so samey with the single trunk, so I said to myself, let me try to do something which has like a double trunk and still look reasonably interesting. So I've got that far. Now let me bring the camera closer and show you what I've done wiring the lower portion and creating the pads. So I'll just switch the view. So this is the lower portion. You can see the pads how I've wired it. So that long branch is going out to the right. Don't get distracted by the uh, potential pad at the top that I've got to sort out. So I've more or less finished this one. Let's see what we can do with that very dense pad at the back, this one. So I'm now going to work on that one. So this, as you can see, is very, very dense. And because literati is a very light, airy uh, feeling, we need to reduce this somewhat. So I'll proceed to reduce the foliage on this and make it look much lighter and give it an airy feeling. So lots of potential branches which will form a nice pad, but I don't think I will need all of them. So pity I can't show you in detail how I'm deciding to cut out bits of uh, the twig ends, but I will get there. So I will just now wire these pads and get it fairly flat so that it doesn't look so bushy. Right, let me show you where I've got to so far. So there's the tree. The trunk was straight, so I've still kept it straight. And this comes out at almost right angles, which looks rather cumbersome and ungainly. So what can I do to make it more, uh, I would say, soft? So I think the best thing to do is to put it at a slant. So if I put it at a slant, you will see straight away, it doesn't look so ungainly. The 90 degree angle is lost. So just by tilting it a little bit, I've changed the entire appearance. So this is more acceptable. So I've got this pad and those pads, and all I now have to do is sort the apex out. So what was an almost impossible tree, I've created something out of it. I will just show you the detail of the pads by getting close. So here you are. You can see how I've been wiring the pads. That is a pad on its own. That is also a pad at the back. And uh, looking from underneath, that is what it looks like. And it still has that very light, airy feeling about the whole tree. So, in fact, it looks nice from any of the sides, any of the sides. So we will put it in a drum pot eventually for you. Although at this time of the year, I may not be so drastic. I may just put it in a little deep training pot for now, but I'm going to now wire the rest of the top to give it a more definitive uh, uh, filial, as it were, the top part. So I won't bore you with the details. So let's have a look at the tree again. I've put it at a slant, and this is what it looks like. So if we were to compare it with the original, we've made a radical transformation of the tree. So this branch, which was straight, has done one bend, two bends, and it's sweeping like a very nice S shape over there. And this has also been bent to give it like a very gentle S, and it's got a nice apex with one of the branches there. And what I have cut off, I will show you, if you can have a look. That's the tree. Uh, 
And that is what we have cut off. I'll just change the angle. So that is all the foliage we've taken off. One of it was quite a major branch, but otherwise I didn't take much off at all. So there you are. We've created a double literati. Double literati from absolutely straight tree with a right angle branch coming out. So I'm now going to take good care of it. I'm not tempted at all to put it even in a temporary training pot. I'm just going to put it in a deep pot to revive the tree and make it grow strong. And perhaps next year I will put it in uh, its, its next but one final pot. So I will put it in a training pot and show it to you again. I'm filming on my own because it's now about half past seven in the evening and all the staff have gone home. And uh, so I'm going to f hold the camera with one hand and uh, try and work with the other hand. So camera in my left hand and working with my right hand. So what am I doing? I'm putting the famous Peter Chan moss around the roots because I want to make sure that this tree has every chance of coming through well. So I will put moss around the roots just to give it uh, a greater chance of coming through and growing strongly. So I'll put it in this rectangular pot planted at a slant and the rest is just filling soil. I'm going to use a bit of a gritty soil and then I'll show you the final tree in its temporary pot. So this is the first literati that we worked on. Again, a very tall, lanky Bouvernensis pine that has been growing in the field for quite a few years, I would say about 10 years. And then it was lifted out of the ground about two years ago and put in this flower pot. So this is well over a meter tall. I think it's like 1.1 or 1.2 possibly. I would say like maybe 44 inches or so tall. And it's just a simple literati. Anything with a tall trunk has that liter literati character. I'm going to let the pads develop and then at the right time I will refine it and reduce it a little more to give it the classic literati shape. This is where the basic line is there and the pads have been formed. I don't want to rush it. I'm not trying to produce an exhibition tree in one go. If I can just remind you, it's got this beautiful natural shari that has come from just distressing, which has happened to the tree, to the trunk. So I might extend that shari all the way up, but let the tree grow stronger. I'm not going to make any attempt to repot this tree. I'm going to just leave it well alone. So this is the first tree. Now I'm going to move on to the double literati that I've just done. So here is the double literati. And if we were to compare it to what it started off like, absolutely straight trunk, and we were able to create these bends. And I will keep a close eye on this and hope that this tree will grow strong. It will take at least two years before it shows uh, maturity, although it is already, I would say, this tree would easily be 20 years old at this stage. But I want everything to heal and more pads to form. So call it what you will. It could be almost like a windswept literati, but it hopefully should resemble some of these Chinese calligraphy paintings of pines that you see in the rugged mountains. So. There you go. Let me just get close to show you some of the detail. I've taken all the tips of the shoots because I wanted to bud back. And I planted in this very deep plastic training pot to give vigor to the tree. Eventually, it'll go in a drum pot. And it might even go in a rectangular pot because the slanting style. 
uh, is not bad. You know, the rectangular pot would suit it. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the creation of this tree, which was almost an impossible tree.